Hi guys, it's another beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. Well, today's video is all about fish. Many have asked, Dexter, did you quit breeding tropical fish? No, I did not. This is our bread and butter. And in fact, I have here plenty of fish right now. And one month ago, we were able to film the actual spawning of this breeder Japanese koi. And today, we are going to make an update. We're gonna harvest the fry of the koi. Well, in breeding Japanese koi, there are really some that will grow big compared to the other siblings. And I have selected more than 1,000 Japanese koi that are now ready to be harvested. And the fry that have inferior quality are being fed to the catfish. Well, we have to face this reality that some of the inferior qualities will be used as feeder. Today, we will select another breeder and I would like to breed this with our old stacks of koi that are placed in front. So you will note that I have here some duckweeds. I intentionally put duckweeds in this tank because I wanted to propagate this one for our chicken. And this is also a good food for our Japanese koi. In fact, I already have many videos about this. Where are they? They are here. So we will place this basin right here down here we will examine if we can breed this tonight you see that oh it's a big koi and filled with eggs oh oh see that yes man in our past videos, we made mention about the importance of the tank preparation and also the preparation of our breeders. So my way of conditioning the breeders is to give them high protein food. I also gave them these duckweeds. There's no problem about conditioning. The problem is about really the tank preparation because the koi will just spawn their eggs if they are given good spawning tank. So this is gonna be bred later tonight and now we are going to empty the tank. We will harvest the first batch of our breeding and we will display this at the pet store. So guys, we already have made a good selection out of the thousands of Japanese koi. We only have chosen more than 1,000. You will now witness how we're going to harvest this one. We will place this in the plastic bags and we will bring this now to the pet store. As what I have said, if we are just industrious, if we are doing what is right, if we are just conscious about doing good to other people, God will bless us and this is a blessing. And we will now catch this one and we'll put this in their individual plastic bags. By the way, I'm going to clean this up because we will breed that orange koi here in this tank. So we will prepare this tank, we will empty this tank and we will allow the heat to dry this up to kill the bacteria. And then we will put some new water and then that's it. We will breed again our Japanese koi.
Let me give you some techniques on how to raise this Japanese koi so quickly. In a batch of a koi breeding, there are really thousands that will be hatched. And in fact, more than 10,000 koi, if you are breeding a big Japanese koi, will be hatched. For us to be able to have good quality of koi in terms of size, we will select the ones that grow first and we will disregard the ones that are inferior. And by doing so, we can have a good quality koi at a given short period of time. So I only raised around 1,500 out of the 10,000 koi that have been hatched. So we will continue the harvesting. You will see that I have prepared a basin and this basin is also being aerated. We have an air pump there and we cannot just allow the koi to gasp for breath because they will suddenly die. And the good time for harvest is actually in the morning. We cannot harvest this during noon time because this is very dangerous. If we will harvest our fry under the heat of the sun, then chances are they will become so stressed and they will die. These plastic bags contain oxygen. I would like to repeat the importance of the oxygen. We cannot do the harvest without the oxygen. And since we cannot carry the big and heavy oxygen tank, we just place the oxygen right here in these plastic bags and we will transfer this to the fish. So you look at this one. We already have harvested 200. Wow, they really have good sizes now. And Maybe you will ask Dexter, what did you feed them? Did you feed fried chicken? No, we are not feeding fried chicken. We're giving live food and we are flushing the water every day. So that's a danger also if you are giving live food and you don't change the water, it will really contaminate the seas because the live food will certainly be also the cause of the bacteria. So we are flushing the water and we are giving live food and we are always decongesting our pan from time to time. So you will see that they are now gasping for breath and this is not good. So we will do this very quickly because we cannot just allow them in that situation for a long period of time. So since we have run short of oxygen, how many plastic bags of oxygen that are left? Maybe there are two, two bags. So this is the last plastic bag of oxygen so we cannot bring this all to the pet store since we already have stirred up the water so we will remove the fish from here we cannot allow the fish to stay here because the ammonia has already developed this is very harmful to the fish so we will now transfer the fish in this tank tomorrow morning we will again do the harvesting and for the meantime since we already run short of oxygen we will remove all the fish from this tank to here and we will provide oxygen and filtration system. Each of this plastic bag contains 70 pieces of this small fry or fingerlings of Japanese koi. Roughly we have harvested one, two, three, four five six seven eight nine ten ten times seventy that's roughly around seven hundred japanese koi that we have harvested this morning so more or less we still have 800 more that are here we will do another harvest tomorrow now we will bring this to the pet store 
And we already have a prepared tank for this. I always mention that whenever we are going to put some new stocks, especially fish, to our pet store, I have emphasized that we will prepare an aged water. That is really the secret to prevent this fish from dying. I have had experience many times using water direct from the faucet to the new fish or new stocks of fish. It will really cause sudden death or even cause this uh, disease of the fish and they will eventually die. So that's the tip that we can give you. And I hope you will be inspired by our videos and if you are a hobbyist, if you are a fish keeper and you've been petting your koi for a longer period of time now and you already have pregnant breeder koi, you can try to breed this one. And uh, I am glad that many people across the globe have expressed their sympathy with us and also expressed their gratitude for making this film, for making this tutorial out of my personal experience. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you will continue to like and share our videos. And if you are new to this channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell for you to be notified of our upcoming uploads. Only here at Dexter's World!